Okay, everyone, with this video, I'm going to discuss the prescribed title number two. So what I'm going to do with this video or with this title is that I first going to go over title itself and discuss the knowledge framework. And finally, I'm going to talk about the outlines and the possible examples. Okay, so TOK prescribed title number two is our most revered knowledge more fragile than we assume it to be. Discuss with the reference to the arts and one other area of knowledge. So the focus on the keywords. So with the title, with this title, there are three uh, terminology or the keywords that you need to focus when you are writing the essay. They are revered knowledge, fragile, and assume. Okay. So what you need to focus the most is the revered knowledge, right? So with this part or with this title, what we are doing is that we are exploring the nature of the knowledge and its perceived fragility. So you know how fragile it is, right? That's what we are discussing it. So to, to discuss whether our most revered knowledge is more fragile than assumed, that's what we are doing it. So since the IB already has chosen one AOK for you, right? This is your first AOK. Uh, what I'm thinking for the other AOK that you can use is the, uh, I suggest that you use something like natural science because they're going to be a lot of example, right? And or, or you can use something like history, okay? So if you're like, natural science person or if you're like a scientific minded person go with the natural science right if you are like more of the history person or artistic person or li linguistic person then go with the history okay uh, you will find a lot of examples from these two AOKs and okay then let's discuss the knowledge framework so to write the TOK's essay, you always have to think about the knowledge framework like which element that you have to use to write your essay and to find or to develop your example, right? So two elements that you're going to use from the knowledge framework are perspectives, methods, and tools, right? Because you're discussing the knowledge itself, right? The nature of the knowledge, it is crucial to use the perspectives and the methods and tools elements of the uh, framework to write your TOK essay. Also, when you're trying to develop your example before writing about it, think about these elements, right? Okay, now let's discuss the introduction. Um, this is like, again, the yes or no question, right? So prescribed title number one was the yes or no question. And again, the prescribed title number two is yes or no question. Okay. However, with this title, uh, it's a little bit different than the prescribed title number one because with this title introduction, you are not identifying the terminology, right? So with this title's introduction, first sentence, always, always you have to write interesting things about the prescribed title question that it will be your sentence number one, right? And then what you need to do is you don't define the key terms in the title like other essays, but however, you're going to, what you want to do is that identifying what knowledge that is and then what our most revered one is, right? What is your definition of it, right? That's what you're going to do. Then you're going to identify your thesis statement, right? So you're going to talk about whether you're going to go with the yes way or no way, right? That's what you're going to do. And then lastly, give the reader a roadmap. So what I mean by roadmap is you have to clarify for the reader how you're going to explore the essay question. Is it yes or no? Which one other AOK you're using? For this case, for this essay, so remember, IB has identified that AOK for you, like the art, right? So it is crucial to identify your other AOK in the introduction. Also, briefly explain how you're going to make the argument in your body. For example, what is your outline of the body looks like, but not in detail, right? So 
you're going to briefly introduce how your outlines of the body will look like, but not in detail. Like you're not going to talk about everything in the introduction, right? You're just introducing what you're going to do in your body. That's what you're going to do in the introduction. Okay, so for this essay, you can use one of the format from these two formats that I have set it for you. So this is just my suggestion, right? But format number one is the most generic format of the TOK essay. You know, you have introduction, AOK1 with the claim, counterclaim, subconclusion, AOK2 with the claim, counterclaim, subconclusion, and then the conclusion. That's format number one, the typical TOK essay format. However, for this essay, you can use little bit different format okay so i'm going to call it format number two uh, with this you will have introduction as usual however you're going to start with the claim number one is that reveal knowledge is more fragile than the what we assume it to be right that's your first claim and you're going to present your example number one of the aok one right and the example number two of your AOK2, and then you're going to identify your sub-conclusion, right? Sub-conclusion is the development section. You know, you're linking what you have found from your AOKs uh, to the prescript title and highlighting the insights you had about this AOKs, in this case, and the prescript title, right? That's sub-conclusion. Okay, so claim number two is your why number two. So means it's a kind of counterclaim part, right? This is your counterclaim compared to claim number one, right? If I'm comparing this to number one, this is considered as a counterclaim. So with the claim number two, you're going to identify revealed knowledge is not more fragile than uh, what we assume it to be. That's your counterclaim. And you, you're going to use the example from the AOK1 and example from AOK2. And you're going to again write the sub-conclusion and finish up the essay with the conclusion, right? Uh, you know, you can definitely go with the, this generic TOK essay format. However, if you use the format number two, depends on how you're arguing I mean, it can be more stand out. It can be more stand out to the examiners, right? And also, if you're using the format number two, make sure you identify uh, your format two in your introduction, okay? Uh, when you're identifying your roadmap, make sure you identify that you're using this format two, right? Uh, identify that you are using this format number two. Don't write format number two, right? You're going to explain briefly that you're going to introduce these two claims and, and then corresponding examples, right? That's how you're going to identify in your roadmap, okay? Okay, then let's discuss how we are going to uh, present the examples of the arts, right? With the art, you know, our first AOK and then the AOK that I have set for you, you know, the claim is the reveal knowledge is more fragile than uh, we assume it to be in arts. Counterclaim is revealed knowledge is not more fragile than we assume it to be in arts, right? All your examples for the arts should focus on knowledge itself, not the artistic work, right? Because the reason why I'm saying this is with this title, we are discussing about the artistic knowledge, right? Not artistic works. Uh, there's a huge difference there, right? So uh, don't forget about it, right? You're, we are focusing on knowledge itself. And therefore, for each piece of evidence, think about this, right? Why it was revealed knowledge and why and why not is more fragile. And if fragile, why revealed knowledge is more fragile than we assume it to be? Also, what are the possible factors that destroys the, think about the word, destroys the revealed knowledge, right? If not fragile, why revealed knowledge is not more fragile than we assume it to be? And what are the possible factors that protects the revealed knowledge, right? So when you're discussing about this fragile revealed knowledge or revealed knowledge that is not fragile, you have to think about also how 
this got destroyed, right? How this got protected, right? Because in the art, knowledge is often viewed as subjective, interpretive, right? And culturally dependent. And this inherent subjectivity makes artistic knowledge seem more fragile and as it can be challenged by the evolving taste, right? Cultural shifts or new interpretive frameworks, right? That's what we Okay, then let's discuss about this one other AOK. As I told you before, or as I suggested before, I'm suggesting you to use the natural science, right? Or history for this AOK. Uh, for the claim, revealed knowledge is more fragile than we assume it to be, right? And the counterclaim is the same thing. Revealed knowledge is not more fragile than we assume it to be in AOK. So all examples should focus on knowledge itself, not the, not artistic, right? Scientific works or the historical object itself, right? That's what we are uh, focusing on. Not the scientific works or the historical object itself, right? So therefore, for each piece of the evidence, just same as the art, Think about following, right? Why it was revealed knowledge and why and why not is more fragile. If fragile, why revealed knowledge more fragile than we assume it? Also, what are the possible factors that destroys the revealed knowledge? And if not fragile, why revealed knowledge is not more fragile than we assume it? And what are the possible factors that protects the revealed knowledge? Again, okay? think about these stories. And okay, finally, let's discuss about the conclusion. So your conclusion must include a lesson statement position or insight about the revealed knowledge by analyzing the example of your choice. This is more of the summary of the two sub conclusion and you had, but also including this, right? So restate the thesis or the central argument, briefly summarize your main claim or point. In this case, the fragility of the revealed knowledge, right? and summarize the key points, highlight the example or ideas that you have used to support your argument, but do so consistently, and broaden the context. This is optional, but I suggest you to do it, right? Because it kind of shows the, your critical thinking skills, right? And the examiners love this part, right? If you include it. So, and also lastly, end with a closing statement. Finish with a powerful statement or reflection that leaves the reader thinking, right? That's what you have to do. Okay, so let's finally talk about the examples, right? So when you're researching for evidence, think about knowledge itself, right? Not the artistic work or the scientific findings itself, or the historical objects. Now, we are not talking about the creation. We are talking about the knowledge itself. And also think about the examples that which revealed different facets of knowledge, creation, and stability, okay? So examples that you can use are the uh, censorship and interpretation of the arts, right? I can use the degenerate art in Nazi Germany, right? You know how Nazi, re in the Nazi realism, they used to destroy the um, avant-garde movement stuff, right? So that was the, they la labeled it as the degenerated and also was like banned, right? And a lot of stuff got dis destroyed on, during that time. So uh, censorship and interpretation on during the World War II, you can use quite a lot of examples during the time, right? Also, you can discuss about the destruction of the cultural heritage in recent years, right? Like, you know how Taliban dis uh, destroyed the uh, cultural heritage uh, because of the, their religious regions, right? Or ideological regions, right? So that can be your history or art example. Or also you can discuss about the Mona Lisa's smile and how it has been uh, you know, interpreted in different ways throughout the history or the in artist art history. That can be your example. Uh, you can discuss about the revisionist history. Like, you know, I used this example with the prescript title, but that example also falls for the prompt number two. You can discuss about the Holocaust denial 
right? And also another good thing can be Imperial Japanese Army Unit 731. If you are in history class, you know what I mean. How Imperial Japanese, uh, you know, say that they never tested on humans, only their Army Unit 731, right? That can be a revisionist history. And then the class of the ancient civilization, like Mayans, right? That can be a good history examples, right? And also you can discuss about the Columbus and discovery of the America. So that can be another history example, right? And then you can also talk about, uh, you know, natural science example that where a scientific theory has been found, but it has been uh, revoked or the has been uh, distorted due to the scientific beliefs or the or the beliefs of human people or cultural beliefs those can be a good natural science examples right i'm pretty sure you guys a lot of you guys must be thinking at this point about you know how you know when galileo found that the earth is round and the people just say like no that's not true that can be a good example for natural science too but Remember that a lot of people are going to choose that example as natural science example. So do a lot of research, make a good argument. If you can make good argument and reasoning, you can definitely use that example, right? So uh, if you're thinking about you know, these common examples that your colleagues or your classmates probably going to use, then do a lot of research, make a good argument and good reasoning that you can use it, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to tell you how I'm going to develop these examples, right? So let's choose the collapse of the ancient civilization. Uh, we know that, you know, the collapse of the ancient civilization like the Mayans or the Indus Valley civilization, you know, we are not discussing the collapse of it. We are not talking about the collapse itself. But what we are just trying to discuss with this title is that a lot of knowledge has been lost due to the collapse, right? Uh, or the due to the absence of the written records of the or the destruction of the artifacts. And this demonstrates the vulnerability of the historical knowledge, right? So once for the history once the historical knowledge has been or the records of it has been destroyed, then it's so fragile, then we don't have it anymore. Right, so this is how you can develop your example. Right, think about what has been lost. Right, how it has been lost. Right, how knowledge got lost. That's what you need to think when you are developing your example. Okay, so this is the end of the title number two. I will come back with the detailed video about title three soon. Okay.